Before we get started, if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let us explain. Anchor has the tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast straight from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It is everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hey you. It's been a while. I'm so glad you're here. And I'm so glad that you've chosen to connect with us. And we know that you have a lot of podcast options. And we're really honored to have you here. If you haven't already, feel free to hit the follow button, leave us a review, or maybe tell your friends about us. Also, if you'd like to continue supporting our podcast journey, we recommend you search for the link in our description and become a supporter. Any type of contribution goes a long way to keep the search alive. Welcome, everybody, to Searching for MacGuffin with your hosts, George, Gabe, and Link. Today, we're going to be talking about theaters, then and now, how we started watching theaters and how they've changed over the years and what it's like in the current climate. Yeah, I think movies are a super important part of our lifestyle, mm -hmm. and a big part of that has been watching them in first run at the movie theaters, which is the option that we had for most of our lives, for most of the films that we had, mm -hmm. there was always the movies that you watch at home, but the movies that you rush to watch, that you have that initial experience and response, uh, for many years, our only options were the movies, the movie theaters. So with that comes different lifestyles, different habits. Not all theaters are equal, and not all movie goers have the same experience. I don't know if you remember the first time you stepped into a theater. I remember for me, it was 1992. And my father took me as a treat for the first time to watch Batman Returns. Wow. And Batman Returns was the sequel to my first VHS tape that I can remember, which was Batman 89. So this was a momentous experience. Okay. And I don't think I, I ever looked back. I just became fascinated with this this room that you pay to go in and share in a communal experience. What about you guys? I think for me, technically the first movie I went to the theaters was The Phantom Menace. Do I remember <laughs> that movie? Um, no. Am I thankful for it? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I remember that, that, I mean, Star Wars is a big part of our family. And it was just, I remember that. I can remember going. I just don't remember what the movie was about. Um, and the the following films, I think, that I started to remember being at the theaters for were, was um, the Lord of the Rings trilogy uh -huh, yeah. and subsequently the Star Wars prequels. Um, but I think the Lord of the Rings has really stuck with me. Um, for, those are my like my earliest memories in the theaters. I don't think I had ever been in a theater that long <laughs> until I saw the Lord of the Rings. Movie. I think that conditioned me to not really caring how long a movie is in a the theater, you know, if it's makes, good. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, for me, kind of, I'm the same like George. My first movie was Batman. Oh, really? Uh, 1997, Batman and Robin. <laughs> okay, okay. What a classic. The classic, game. the best not, Batman not ever. The, the best Robin. Batman movie ever made. <laughs> I don't think that's Academy true. Award winning, or should have been. Um, George I don't Blue. know. I don't know why Arnold didn't win. Or uh, Chris O'Donnell. No, Arnold. Okay. Didn't win a, a best supporting actor. Fake lips. But yeah, it, that's the, that was the first movie I ever watched in theaters, and oh, that was... Lips. Was it rubber? That was rubber lips. No, yeah. I thought it was plastic. Thanks for the correction. Yeah. But yeah, so it wasn't the best movie to go to, but it is what it is. You know, it wasn't the best movie, but it was your movie. No? Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. So, so we lived, and we like got older, and we stopped being taken to the movies by our parents, and instead... We ended up having to pay for movies ourselves. No, technically, you guys paid for us. Really? That? How? You and my sister paid really? for me. And really? We used to pay for your movie. Maybe for Link, not for me. Yeah, this is. Cool. You were like you were younger. Oh, that's yeah. true. Your, your first movie was. But I'm pretty sure like money was sent with me. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So eventually, we had to find a way to watch all these movies, and it was funny because 
for so many people, like my friends growing up, movie going was like an event. It was like, oh, we're going to watch that movie. Mm-hmm. But for me, it was a habit. It was like, what movie am I watching this week? Yeah. Sometimes two or three movies. During the weekend, yeah. Yeah. So it used to be find the cheapest time, you know, earlier, find the cheapest theater. Oh, dollar theaters. Did you guys ever get to experience dollar theaters? Nah. Later on in life. Really? Yeah. I, Where? I, um, in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And there was one in Orlando, I think, as well. Okay, yeah. We used to have a dollar theater here in Miami, and the hot dogs and the nachos were also a dollar. Nice. So it was like the most amazing experience. <laughs> None of it was good, but it was... But it was ours. It was It was an experience. Yeah. I mean. So then came the subscription service, which is all the rage now for everything. But I my first subscription service was Movie Pass. And I got this several years ago. It was like a thirty dollar service. And I got it so that I could, you know, basically watch the movies that I wanted. And I had it when nobody had it, right? Because it was like thirty dollars is like a big investment. Thirty dollars a month, thirty dollars a year. Yeah, it was thirty dollars a month. It was thirty dollars oh, wow. a month. What? I thought it was cheaper. Yeah, yeah. no, because I had Movie Pass before everyone else heard yeah. about Movie Pass. It was like a super niche product, and I had it. My wife didn't have it, and I used to like just rack up points on my card to pay for the other tickets. So I would like pass by the movie theater on the way home from work or from school and I would just buy a ticket to the movie and then not go to the movie Mm -hmm. or buy a ticket to the movie and then like return it for one of those vouchers. And then I would just keep stacking up like free tickets to the movies because you could go to one movie per day. But it was, it was 30, you know, $30. Then somebody bought them an investment firm or whatever it was. And then they created that nine ninety nine plan, which I think is when you guys jumped aboard. Yep. What was that like? That was magical. You guys told me about it, and I was like, this seems too good to be true. Yeah, yeah. It literally and was. It really was. I would have been super skeptical, too, except that I had already had it for years, you know? And I, the price had gone up for me. It was like $25 at first, then it was 30 like the second year, then it was 35 and then this bargain bin price came, but I already, like, I had been with the company for several years, so I knew it was real. And, I mean, really quick thing, I think for anybody that doesn't know you, George... Um, you have a talent, I think, um, for finding deals, finding loopholes in, in so many things. You just keep your ear to the Sticking ground. Sticking it to the man. Yeah. You're just always like updated and it's like, and it's nothing like shady or illegal. Like it's all like, like perfect. taking advantage of promotions and stuff. And, yeah, yeah. But like just finding out, finding it to like, just squeeze the most out of it. And it's like, honestly, throughout the years, it's been a talent and a joy to watch. You're like a couponer, but for nerds. Yeah. Well, it's and it comes out of necessity because for anyone who's listening to this show, we're into a lot of stuff and it gets really it's expensive. Really expensive yeah. 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 And and the higher you go up in the tax bracket through your life, you know, you're a kid, you don't have an income, then you're like making a couple of bucks on the sides while you're in college. Then you know, then you get your first real job, then you get a better job, but then the expenses go up too because everything keeps getting more expensive and you get into more stuff. Yeah. And it's it you're keeping up with the Joneses. In like a sci-fi nerd, like geek <laughs> kind of way. So you, I have to, I had to survive. And I just, this was what I shared with you guys. Movie pass. And we're so thankful for your service. <laughs> so that flopped eventually. I mean, it was unsustainable. It was literally too good to be true. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I would ask the questions like, how do these people make money? Like, how does it, how is this profitable? They were selling our data, right? That's how they were supposed to get their Yeah, data. they were supposed to sell our data. But they realized that who cares about this? Yeah, data? nobody wants the date, like movie going data, at least not for the amount of money that, that you know, they were spending on paying for our movie tickets. Well, with Movie Pass, they had that monthly fee, correct? Yes. And you can watch, was, it, was there a limit to... One a day, right? It was one a day of a regular standard ticket. So no Dolby, no IMAX, no RPX, mm-hmm. whatever it might be. No 3D. 3D was big at the time. Yeah. And that was always a problem. The problem is with me was that the theaters, especially before the 999 thing, I know before the crash... Theaters got smart of it and they started like cracking down on you returning tickets and stuff like that. Yeah. But basically, in relation to the theater and you, you were paying for a ticket. A credit card, a Visa or a MasterCard was paying for a ticket. They got their money. They didn't care. 
So, like, I would buy a regular price ticket, and then I'd just exchange it at the box office for a 3D <laughs> ticket and pay the difference, like a dollar, three dollars, whatever it is, you know, upgrade to... So I could watch whatever movie I want. I just had to pay a couple of extra bucks. But, I mean, it was amazing at the time to be able to, you know, buy whatever you want. Yeah. Um, But it crashed because they couldn't get the money they wanted for the data. Too and... many people like you. Yeah, well, the, the 999, though, model was not sustainable. It doesn't... I mean, I had been doing it for years at $30. It kind of makes sense because you can only go to so many movies, movies. Yeah. You know? And I'm sure some people, it was kind of like the gym membership. That was the other thing that they literally sold it like, oh, some people aren't going to go to the movies. It's going to be so cheap. They're not even going to use it. Yeah. But like for $10, they're going to go to one movie <laughs> in the month. And if they don't go this month, they're going to go to two next month. Like, there's no way you're... During the summer, they go, like, the three. Yeah. Three they could not go to a movie, like, January through March, and then over the summer just eat you alive, like, your whole... Yeah. So, it really didn't make sense, but I also think it was, like, a racketeering scheme. It was just to get... To pump investors in, and then, yeah. you know, cash out. Cash out. I mean, I remember when, when, as it was collapsing, like, literally seeing it, like, we were just getting updates and tweets and, th- and just updates on Reddit, and I remember just seeing it, like, it's unraveling. People were pulling out. Like uh-huh. the service wasn't really working. People were at theaters, like causing like there was like a ruckus and stuff like that. Yeah. And I remember as we were, we were I think we were watching a, a movie at home, and as all that was happening, we we're like, man, this is crazy. Like I can imagine all the people that just like subscribe and stuff like that. Yeah. And then I received a text from a friend that basically read, "Hey, bro, just got movie pass. What are we gonna watch next?" <laughs> As it was falling apart. And that was like, like I showed all you guys and then we just, we got a good laugh out of it. And I think, I think one of you posted on Reddit and it got pretty popular. I remember they ran a promotion near the end where they're like, oh, prepay for the whole month, for the whole year, I'm sorry. And <laughs> it'll be cheaper. And then people were asking me, should I do that? And I was like, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. This isn't going to last. Some people did anyways. It is what it is. Some yeah. of them got some money back. But I remember when it crashed for me, I was watching that rock skyscraper movie. I don't remember what it was called. Skyscraper. It's about Brian. It's about power. We stay hungry. We devour. Is it really just called Skyscraper? I'm pretty sure it's just okay. called Skyscraper. Well, so I was going to watch Skyscraper for no reason, I guess, just because movies are free. And then um, and then it wouldn't work. It was like, oh, you can only watch it like at nine at this theater. And I'm like, wait, what? What now? <laughs> so I was already at the theater. And I was like, all right, this is the time. I'm going to subscribe to AMC A-List. The it's service happening! Edit. Wait, why were you watching that rock movie? I mean, it was because your brother wanted to watch oh. it, to be honest with you. Were you going to ask like, him, where, why didn't you invite him? No, I would I not want to I would not want to watch that. <laughs> no, I don't think he even looked. Or were you in California? I was in California. Yeah. I, didn't wanna, I still wouldn't want to watch that. I think he was like, hey, they're saying good things about the Skyscraper movie. And, and I, I mean, like, you have movie pass, yeah, so why like, not? Yeah, it's free, whatever. I already, already paid for it. I wouldn't waste my time on that. So, I got AMC A-List, right? If movie pass walked and then crashed and burned so that A list could walk, that kind of became the thing. The past how long how long did we have it before theaters closed? I want to say like two years. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. That was a good while. And it's been it was it's been a nice ride. Well for anyone who doesn't have A list or doesn't know how it works or was confused during this entire movie pass conversation, what is AMC A list and how does it work exactly? Well, basically AMC A list is Basically, what George was saying, how Movie Pass crashed and burned, and so Movie Pass walked so AMC could run. Basically, it's a subscription based service where you pay. It's a different amount. It's a different fees depending on the yeah, state, correct? On your state. Yeah. So it's roughly around twenty, twenty two dollars. Like twenty, twenty two, or twenty five, depending on what state you live in. Twenty five. Yeah, I think if you're in New York or California, it's twenty five. But man, like, if you're in wow. New York or California, like one ticket to the theater is like twenty five bucks. That's true. And basically, you pay that a monthly. You pay that monthly subscription fee, and you get to watch, I believe, three movies a week. Mm-hmm. And it's any format, really: IMAX, Dolby, 3D. Which, honestly, like George said, one of those one ticket to that basically pays the service pays for itself. Yeah, and also this model makes a lot more sense because you're you're more limited. You only got three movies, but I mean, come on, most normal people, you know, I'm not gonna have time for more than that. And also, it's the theater selling you the tickets directly. So it makes more sense because they basically cut into their profit for the ticket sale yeah. in order to get you in the theater so they can sell you other stuff. And it's kind of like, it's a, well, it's a subscription model. It's just like instead of making you pay for the movie, 
like a streaming service or any other subscription, you know, they pay to get you in there and then they sell you. They front the cost. Yeah. And to for full um, representation here, I know that Regal has another service, Regal Unlimited, and you can actually watch a different movie every day. It You just have to book them in person. Otherwise, they charge you fees and stuff. So there's other models like that. Um, I, we just don't have experience with it. We've been with AMC for the last two years. And I think that this created movie going and theater as a weekly, you know, culture for us. So what, where were you at right before theater started closing in 2020? What was your movie habits like? How often would you go? What would you watch? With whom? I'd go with you guys whenever you guys went. You want to go with other people? Yeah. No, I I I pretty much go to any movie I wanted. That's mm-hmm. one thing I love about AMC, at least the one here in Miami, is that or Sunset, um, they they have more of a selection, especially with indie films. Uh-huh. So I like going to that one. And yeah, all that. it's like the artisan films, correct? Yeah. yeah, that's another reason too why I chose AMC A list over Regal Unlimited. In our region, and this could be completely inverted in someone else's region, but in our region, that's where the that's where the art yeah. art house films, where the independent films, where the smarter films go, because our local regals don't really care yeah. those movies. Exactly. So I, I would watch any movie I, I was interested in, and I knew for sure I was going to get the big blockbuster ones with you guys, and mm-hmm. I knew for sure that if I wanted to watch an indie movie, you guys would probably be interested in it too. Right. So I wasn't worried about going by myself because. Like, hey, you want to go watch this, Gabriel? I'm like, yeah. All right. So that was my movie habit. She's going with you guys and with friends as well, but mostly you guys. Yeah. So for me, I was still in Tennessee at the time in college. And I basically was like the AMC spokesperson <laughs> yeah. for my friend group. Um, before the pandemic, I was with A List. I was going to the movies almost every week when there was like a significant job for like a week, a thing to do on the weekend, you know, small town. There's not a lot to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so movies are always a good deal. The movie theater was like 25 minutes away. Um, and so it was their their biggest format. The best format was IMAX. Only they didn't have any Dolby. Okay. Which I kind of missed out on like some big films. Um, mm-hmm. But it's still fine because IMAX was like my Dolby. IMAX was was everything. And I would always go to IMAX film unless it was something that didn't have a that premium format. Um but definitely, I, I was convincing people. I was like, hey, you guys want to go to the, you guys want to watch a movie like during the week? <laughs> it was especially like on Tuesdays, um, since they had like discount Tuesdays. Yeah. So general tickets were like $5. And I just convinced them, like, hey, like, do you want to come? I had, with me um, inviting people and bringing people to the theaters, I would pay for their tickets and then yeah. they just send me the money and just rack up those reward points. So mm-hmm. I never really had to pay for concession for, for food. Um, you can invite a friend every once yeah, like in a while. Yeah, like if you want to come on a date. <laughs> so it's like, it was basically just paying for itself. And it's, I, I was thriving off of it. Yeah. And it's like those big movie events, like like let's say Endgame or the big blockbuster movies like Star Wars. I was buying like entire rows mm-hmm. for people. Um, I remember like for Endgame, that was one of the big ones. I bought like two rows for, for everyone. And I got so many points. I really just, I really just $5 reward, $5 reward, $5. And I think that people kind of saw me as like the movie guy. Like, right. hey, I was like a I was like a movie agent in the sense of like like you know ticket like a uh, ticket a ticket agent for vacation. Mm-hmm. They're like, hey, are you gonna go watch this? People like people I they're like I was like acquaintances with. They'd be like, hey, are you you're going to this, I heard you're going to this movie. Do you think you get me a ticket? Or like I was the guy that like gets the seats for right. people. And I mean, I kind of like that. Yeah, you know, it's something that I'm passionate about. It's something that I that I frequently go to, and you become the go to movie guy. Yeah, and and, and I mean, I, I love doing that. Um, I love being able to facilitate that for them because if it wasn't for me, I I don't think a lot of them would be in the theaters yeah. seeing movies or finding something they like because absolutely because a lot of them ended up being regulars with me coming mm-hmm. to coming to. I was like, hey, you guys want to watch this? And sometimes they'd be like, hey, you gonna watch this? Or even um, other times they would subscribe to a list. Right. And I mean, it was kind of a loss with the points but i mean i was happy i had someone else to to come with me to enjoy this and sometimes it was just sometimes i would go by myself no one like could come and and i like i'm not a person that needs to be with somebody else Mm -hmm. i like i just like enjoying the movie um serves as a distraction sometimes and uh yeah i remember one time i was going through like a an emotional issue it was like a breakup and 
I ended up going to watch that uh, Predator movie. Oh, <laughs> the most recent one. Was that a pick me up or? Was um, that a... no, it was. It sent me down a darker hole, but oh. I got over it. It reminded you of her, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. Officially. You know it's funny because, like I said, I'm usually a bit. I'm an introvert. Uh, I don't like doing things, many things with people. Mm-hmm. Video games, I'd rather play by myself. Right. I know you guys talked about like the social aspects of video games. Mm-hmm. But move, going to movies is one of the few things where I, I really enjoy going with people. Mm-hmm. I don't mind going by myself, like you said. Like If no one wants to go to a movie I won't, don't want to go to, they don't want to go to, no problem. I'll watch it and I'll be happy because I'm watching it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't mind. I love going to movie theaters with people. That's I love that. One of the few t- things that I'm, very, that I'm happy to socialize in. Yeah. You both mentioned the social aspect, which is huge for theater going and the theater going experience. Part of that is being able to share the art of film that you know we, we all love with our friends and our family. And the other part of it is sitting in a room with complete strangers and kind of having, having a sort of communal worship, right? Yeah. Where you're a shared experience, right? Where you explore these narratives, these stories, and, and you can look around the room or you can hear and listen to those reactions. What's one of the, the high points of your theater going experience? Oh man, so for me, <laughs> nothing, maybe Endgame probably, going. <laughs> okay. but the highest point for me was when The Dark Knight Rises came out. AMC had this promotion where you could watch uh, the whole trilogy that same night, right? Mm-hmm. You'll start off with Batman Begins like at 3 p.m., mm. and then you go to The Dark Knight at 6 p.m., and then at midnight, you'd watch Dark Knight Rises, and beautiful. we did that. And that was like the best day of my life. <laughs> I love that day so much because we spend it with people I love, good friends who yeah. also love Batman. Like I said, Batman special to me. He was the first movie. He was the first movie I ever watched. Right. Um, and not only that, I just love the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogies. The Dark Knight trilogies are great. There's some of the, I think, the best com- uh, comic book movies out there. And the fact that I was able to watch all three of them in that day, it reminded me, man. How good is Dark? There's Batman it really, Begins. Like, yeah. It really hammered it home. Dang, Batman Begins is great. I also loved watching it with like a gamut of different type of yes. people because there were some who had seen the movies fifty times. There were some who it'd been a long time, so it was like they were new again. And then there were literally people who had never seen a Batman movie, so it was literally like six, seven hours of completely new Batman content for them. Like weren't even really into Batman. I envied them so much. Yeah, yeah, that it was quite an experience. But yeah, so that was like, I peaked there in life. I mean, I was kind of happy with that experience because I was watching Batman Begins and I was like, hey, it's not Tom Cruise. It is Christian Bale. Yeah. And I love Christian Bale now. Yes. Um, listeners who remember that Gabriel thought Tom Cruise. It's a, it's a throwback. Yeah. But I think um, that experience is very up high on my list. And I mean, for the sake of variety, I'll go with a different um, cinematic event. Mm-hmm. And that would be with, the MCU um, with Avengers Endgame. And I think, I mean, I can't really talk about Endgame without talking, without uh, mentioning Infinity War. Yeah. The year before that. And I mean, and those like, re- like those blockbuster events, those big movies, I think that, I mean, the reactions are something that people will always remember. Mm-hmm. Um, it stays with you for a long time. And I remember in Infinity War, when a movie ended, like I remember when Thor's entrance in Wakanda, Everyone's freaking out. Like that was one of the biggest um yeah. cheers moments or pops, if you will. And so I thought I would um kind of get that reaction toward the end because it was like right. that's gonna happen. But when I tell you that the end of Infinity War, how it ended after the snap, you could f- like the tension in the room was palpable. You could feel everyone just deflate. Yeah. Everyone is like just unified depression even though it we know it's not real. Yeah, like it it visibly affected people. I mean, including myself, everyone was just like what just happened? And that was a different experience because usually like everyone's like cheering and everyone's having a great yeah. time. Mm-hmm. But that one's like it's collective depression. Yeah. And it's like it's um you feel it more in in a in a group yeah, and you expect it in like a small group, like at some indie film, which you know it's about some kind of horrors of humanity, right? Exactly. But you don't expect it in a big tentpole film. Exactly. So then moving forward, we go through that year, then Endgame comes out. And for me, like there was a lot of things 
going up to it, I was it was my senior year of college. Um, just finished a soccer championship game, which we won, mm -hmm. thankfully. And then, but I, to be honest, the game was in my rearview mirror. Or like to be honest, if we went to extra time, I told my friends, I told everyone there, if we went to extra time, I was gonna, I was gonna leave to meet my <laughs> showing to to get to my showing. What you have to? I t I told him I was like, listen, whatever it takes. This whatever is takes. exactly this is. I was using that for like a month straight. <laughs> this this wasn't like I wasn't messing around. Like the soccer game, it's like, listen, okay, that's fine. You guys enjoy it. You guys have fun. But if it's extra time, I'm gone because the showing was like... Just, like so it, we're tied. There's a minute left. I'm going to auto-go. Yeah. Sorry, we're guys. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You just got to do it without me. Um, that was, actually would have been really bad. I was the captain. <laughs> so, but anyways, half of my soccer team was going to that showing with me. Um, so Did it drive you to win or... It pushed me. I, I think it did push me. I watched the trailer right before the game. Like I did with the other one. Mm -hmm. But so we... Thankfully, we won, and then we're just racing over. We go, we go get shot. We shower, we change. I put on my cap, um, my Captain America T-shirt and my giant Tony, uh, Tony Stark Iron Man helmet. Okay. And we are on our way to the film, and that's one of the things. Getting to the film before you even in the theater, it was such like a, mm -hmm. it's a surreal experience because everyone's buzzing. Mm -hmm. There's so much tension before you even get in there. Everyone's excited. People dress up in costumes and, and things like that. And it's just, it's different. Yeah. So once we're in the theaters, everyone's still excited. Whatever. We watch the movie. Before we watch the movie, I actually recorded a voice memo to record the reactions that the theater has. Really? And, and I still listen to it sometimes randomly. Like, I'm just like, oh, I voice memos. Let's, let's see what they got. And I can, I can just pinpoint every moment that happens, every like crowd reaction. You have your own watch along tape basically but it's like it's not even i'm not even watching it it's i'm just listening to it but like even just listening to it can take me back like when thor picks up the ham not thor, when cap picks up the hammer yeah oh, that was incredible when it's just there's so many like i can't even describe all of them there's so many moments that it's just it's unbelievable and it's to me it's probably the most um special if not for the for the bat for the dark knight trilogy but i don't think I've ever experienced anything. I don't think I will, to be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was such a, it was such a moment that I don't know. A that, moment in time. Right? Yeah, it was, it was beautiful, and and I'm happy that I was able to, to kind of get a little piece of that with the voice memo, with the voice notes, and and kind of just to to keep with me, to to take it with me. And if anyone wants to listen to it, I can share it with them. Like if they didn't get that experience, yeah, an which audio I mean, I time like, capsule, yeah. I feel like every I feel like everyone more or less did, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, that's that was just uh, just incredibly special to me. It 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 almost sounds ridiculous the way that you describe it, but that's what we that's what we look into on this show because these stories they engage with us and we see ourselves reflected in them. It's almost like losing Infinity War was like like losing an election or some kind of great yeah. tragedy, <laughs> and then the triumph of Endgame is like collective celebration like you know winning one with the team like larger than us and yeah like you're, you're in there with them yeah. and it's just it's a special experience and i don't know it, i can just there's a video of there there's a video out there of me um after watching the film um with me in my iron man helmet mm -hmm. and my head just in my hands after like witnessing what i just saw obviously i was sad um spoilers for tony <laughs> um but just it was just so much it was just so much um epicness i i mean for lack of a better term there you i just couldn't i really can't put it into words exactly yeah. what i felt um but yeah that that's just extremely special to me yeah you guys mentioned tragedy you guys made mentioned triumph you, you mentioned uh new discoveries surprises it's funny cuz for me my high points that I you would think it'd be Link's answer. It's it's comedy. It's humor. It's laughing on the floor in a theater full of complete strangers. I'll never forget we were in New York. We were visiting me and my wife. Um and everywhere we go, we go watch a movie. Even though we're traveling. Like we have an agenda of like all the important things, but we still find time to sneak in a movie to remember that trip. And I remember Nacho Libre had come out. Mm -hmm. And it was like 
the dumbest movie and we didn't know anything like going into it we're just like okay jack black is a mexican luchador we've talked about like um, my passion for professional wrestling you know we like comedy films so we we paid like 20 bucks for a ticket on times square like we were having dinner in times square and seeing the sights and we thought we'd pop in the movie was short and we didn't know what to expect and we were just on the floor laughing not just because the movie was funny which it is but just the unexpectedness Mm. of it being funny in the way that it was and then the infection of just being surrounded by other people who are also laughing at it because a crowd could kill a show and it could also elevate it and a movie theater experience is just like that in the same way as like concerts or theater or, or you know live action plays So the fact that we were all on the same page, and then the other time that I laughed was, I went to go see, not a minute, it was like a 10 p.m. release of Snakes on a Plane. I think it came out at 8 or 10 p.m. I know I didn't go at midnight, I wasn't that hardcore, but this movie like was basically, for me, the first meme film, where like everything about it was being memed, and I showed up, and I dragged, I dragged my wife to the movie, and she's like, why are we watching this again? She was aware of the memes and everything, but not enough to get her to go watch the movie, yeah. you know, especially opening night. But man, am I so glad that I went on opening night because every single person there was on the same page that this movie was going to be a joke and that we were there to make fun of it. So we weren't stepping on anybody's toes because we were all counting down the snake clock. We were all saying all the lines from the trailers. We hadn't seen this movie, but we already knew the script. And <laughs> it just, I, you can't recreate that. I you probably didn't get that the third day or a week later or at home for sure, you know. And these experiences, they define what would keep driving us back into these dark rooms with strangers to listen to other people's stories. But all of that was taken away from us with the pandemic closures. The last year was a hard year for theaters. And I don't know how you guys reacted to it, but for a while there, I, I questioned whether we would whether we would be coming back to them. What was your initial response to the theater closures? It was hard losing movie theaters. Because um, I thought we were going to lose them forever. Yeah. Because, you know, you kept up with the news. It, it seemed like AMC was going <laughs> to go bankrupt. They're going to... Yeah. I thought AMC was going to be done. Like, we lost AMC forever. Um, But I wasn't... But I was okay with it. Because... Streaming started happening. Okay. They started streaming more movies in theaters. I mean, in, 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 uh, on streaming services. And I enjoyed that a lot. So it hurt. But like I said, I don't mind watching movies by myself. And, and you were watching them by yourself, right? Because it wasn't even like you could get together. Yeah, I couldn't people. get with other people, right? So I'm like, oh, you know what? I didn't have to pay much for it. <laughs> I think someone, someone's Netflix paid for this. Right. <laughs> Someone's HBO Max paid for this. I'm good. I got to watch free movies. Didn't have to pay for parking. Didn't have to pay for gas. Yeah. I got what I wanted. Yeah, and for me, um, I think that, referring back to my previous story about Endgame, I think after that I was kind of, not exhausted, but it was a lot that I went through. Mm-hmm. And so I, still, I was still going to watch movies. But I don't think it was as like I need to I need to be there I need to be there opening I need I was still trying to attempt but it wasn't I didn't have this it wasn't the same passion I feel like sometimes I needed a break um, but I was still going and it started building back up when uh, Rise of Skywalker was coming out mm-hmm. and I mean I had such hype for this for this film and what could it go wrong Yeah it was <laughs> I think that's a story for a different time but then after that. I started watching. There was some. There was some quality movies coming out, and it was a weird start to the year. Um, but they did have some really good movies, like 1917, Bad Boys for Life, Little Women. Um, I really enjoyed The Gentleman. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed that one too. And the last movie I actually saw in theaters before everything had started was Harley Quinn: Birds of Prey. That was around like February. Mm-hmm. And then the pandemic came and everything closed, and I was like well, what's going to happen? Because, I mean, there are movies slated to release. Where, where, When are they going to come? I remember, like, James Bond was one of them. Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. Wonder Woman, exactly. Yeah. And uh, Black, Black Widow. Widow. Right. 
and I was just kind of like, oh, what are they gonna do? Dude, because no, no. there was a there was a film, um, there was a movie coming out, The Invisible Man. Yeah, The like Invisible that? Man. Yeah, yeah. That I movie watched was, that right before the that movie, movie was supposed like... to come out. I think that was one of the first ones that I remember mm-hmm. um, being like a straight to. No, it came out to theaters. theaters. It It had a really small window before the pandemic. So it was still running in theaters. Okay. So once the theaters closed, like it went straight to, like it skipped the normal like cycle. Like it would have still been in theaters, but because theaters were closed, it was with their way early. So you might have missed it and it felt like right away, but. Gotcha. Yeah, I saw it before. What what was the last couple of movies you saw in the theater? I want to say, man, that's a hard one. I want to say all the movies leading up to the, to the Oscars, mm-hmm. you know, Little Woman, Jojo Rabbit, yeah. 1917, but that was the year, you know, that was a Jan, you know, December, January. Yeah. So maybe Birds of Prey. I, mean, I, I, I know we watched uh, The Invisible Man together. Mm-hmm. I know after the Oscars we saw Birds of Prey and we saw Invisible, Invisible Man. Man. So I think probably The Invisible Man. Was did you like, Did you ever watch Sonic the Hedgehog? No, unfortunately not, because I love John Ralphio, but I didn't get to watch. <laughs> I didn't it. either, but I heard the movie was good. Did you watch Call of the Wild? That's Harrison Ford, right? Yeah. That was pretty good, too. I saw Emma, and then I saw Onward. I took my nephews to to see, or cousins to see Onward. And then theaters closed, and it was on Disney Plus, like, in weeks. <laughs> and I was like, man, I went to go watch Onward for no reason. I mean, it was fine. It was a good movie. But it was just funny, that experience of, like, I just saw those movies in theaters, and now everybody can watch them at home. Especially Onward, because it was free. But it's it's really, it's really strange now, like, once they started sending these some of these movies straight mm-hmm. to straight to home because when i was younger i'd watch a movie in the theaters and this is before movie pass or a list before i could rewatch a movie i had to actually pay again yeah and i really couldn't go with myself because i was young mm-hmm. and so basically i would watch it once and if some of you guys went to watch it again awesome good for me but most of the times it was only just once yeah and it was gonna be months before you could ever see it again. exactly and there was moments in certain movies where like i want to watch this again i want to see this again and like you said, it'd be months, months before they came out on DVD, and to to have those movies come straight, like either just watching it in the theaters and then having it, or just coming straight to home, was really like it was really weird. It was really strange. I was welcoming it, but I also thought it was, I don't know, it was such a, a culture shock to me. I think. Yeah. No, I loved it. I as soon as they started doing them, like this makes sense. I hope yeah. this is a model that we move to. Yeah, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I was kind of a proponent for this model. I, I think theaters have always had a role or a place in, you know, in our release models. But more things direct to consumer, I think that's great, especially digital, too. I, I we were here already, right? Before, there was a big controversy. Netflix started producing these big movies, getting Oscar noms for them. Yeah. You know? And and there was a big controversy. Well, they're not really in theaters. You know, they would release them in LA for seven days, which I think is like the minimum requirement. Mm-hmm. You know, and then it would show up on on streaming. But we were moving into these because more and more platforms. The Irishman was one of them. Yeah, yeah. The Irishman. Uh, was the um, the Italian film, Roma. 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 And. Is, it, is that even an Italian film? No, that's, 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 that's a Mexican. Mexican. That's cool. <laughs> it's Rome, called bro. Roma, man. I'm sorry. I forgot. I know I know what you meant. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'm glad yeah, you yeah, knew yeah, what I meant, yeah. even though I got the geographical location wrong. But several of those types of movies, and, and also the action blockbusters, you know? And Netflix was becoming like as big of a studio as all the other major studios, to the point where the major studios started creating their own platforms, because they realized, yeah, we're getting paid a lot of money for to put these movies on Netflix, but I bet we can make more money if we just distribute them ourselves. ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was like exacerbated in the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. I think that we were always going to head this route. Mm-hmm. I think that, I mean, with Netflix changing the game like such a long time ago, it's just been growing. But I definitely think the pandemic expedited the process um, of basically what we now call the streaming wars. Right. And for better or worse, it's here and. And I don't know how to feel. I mean, I'm happy because mm-hmm. I think in the world we live in today, I think the consumer wins. Yeah, I yeah, think exactly. so. Yeah, exactly. That's why I like it. And I think, I mean, I, I mean, I completely agree with you. But I think that for me, um, there was a, a moment during the pandemic. And I mean, it still could happen um, 
that theaters were starting to look a thing of the past. Yeah. It was starting to look as if they were going to be the new drive-ins. Yeah. Something you do like an arcade or something like that. Something yeah, you the do arcades, like on a, absolutely. Remember, something you do remember, on a date. I remember George giving me that that, <laughs> that speech. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I could see it happening. Yeah. I, I think... Th- I don't know. I think they've done a good job with reopening, and we'll get to reopening in a second. But, but I do still think that the more digital our society becomes, and the more advances we have at home. For example, I was never like a technical film buff in the sense I never had a great sound system. I had a good TV, but never like cutting edge. Yeah. But once we got sent home, and months passed without a theater experience, I started investing in my home system for the first time. You know. So round saw sound, um, lights, you know, uh, the sync box, uh, you know. <laughs> that, was cre- whole, that was a whole mission to to find all the connecting pieces to make it the ultimate entertainment. Yeah, to kind of create your own in-home theater experience, you know, getting, finally making the jump to, you know, to 4K and, and Dolby support and getting the right apps, the right device to get the best bit rate because that is one thing it's not only about especially like talking about a home theater system it's not mm-hmm. a, just about the screen the the fancy tv or anything yeah. like that the sound plays a huge role into that yeah especially, especially in those premium exactly, formats, exactly yeah. which we didn't grow up watching because they didn't exist yeah and then they're way overpriced i mean obviously they're priced at a at a reasonable price but it's just a lot of money to go watch a movie to take a risk on a movie that you haven't seen for twenty dollars but with these subscription services, they allowed it happen. now they're like the only thing I go watch. I love you, AMC. <laughs> so we switched. There was um, there was a couple of experiments that went on during the pandemic. Disney tried Premier Access. What did you think about that model? Like pay for the movie, thirty bucks up front, and then you have it for from this point on, as long as you're subscribed to their service. I'm gonna be honest. I never purchased a movie on my own okay. if someone wanted to get it someone wanted to watch it if you had enough people mm-hmm. and then we'll chip in and we'll get it and right. we'll watch it. i think we did that for mulan we did it I'm for not, mulan yeah because we had i had tickets to we mulan. Did it for mulan and black widow no yeah i'm gonna be honest with you i did it with someone on my account for every premiere like i did it for corella because the kids and the families you know that are that are in my family they wanted it i did it for jungle cruise too because we still weren't ready and we wanted to watch it and we were kind of starved for content. Yeah. And it was 30 bucks. So it was like, okay, one, two, three, four, five, you know, divided by 30. It's easy to pay for it and that's it. And it's there. And I also wanted to support that model. Yeah. So I think that, well, we were in two different places at the time. Yeah. Geographically. Um, you, like you guys were down here in Miami. Well, I was... Also philosophically. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was, I was back up there in Tennessee and around, August, yeah, they were kind of they were a little more lax, I guess, mm-hmm. with the with the restrictions. Um, AMC was opening up theaters. W- were they opening theaters down here? Or were I you... think they were opening here, but, but it was, I was Miami not considering was like a, Miami was like a hot spot. Right? Yeah, I don't think many people were going. Yeah, yeah, our numbers were way high, and the restrictions were very like they were open, but it was like they were selling very little seats in the theater. Yeah, and you know, and me personally, like you know, I have older parents. So I wasn't considering, you know, going out there and exposing myself. No, of course. I'm, you know, I'm an educator. I, you know, I teach other kids and stuff. So I was still at home. So, but you're, you know, you're a young, sexy you know, <laughs> college age student at the time. So with the difference in locations, um, like I said, they were, the restrictions weren't as, um, as tight over there. So I would go, AMC had opened up and they were spacing you out. I think you had like one seat, you had like, ev- like, Every two seats around you mm-hmm. was blocked off, and like someone had to sit around, like around you there, um, which, which was beautiful for buying out a theater, by the way. Because oh, sure. here and like in in one theater here in Tamiami, there's only like thirty seats in the theater. Yeah. So if you choose the right seats, you, just you could block out the entire theater. It was crazy. So one thing that I did enjoy um, with this, like obviously the theaters are trying to get some business back, so they bring back a bunch of classics. Mm-hmm. Um, so this gave me the opportunity to watch, um, Inception yeah. for the 10th anniversary, um, and Empire Strikes Back, wow. which I never got to watch in the theater. So I thought it was, I thought it was a great opportunity, um, to, to do it because I think at this time AMC had paused a list yes, and you could like bring it back up if you wanted to. 
Um, so that's what I did. And following that Christopher Nolan trend, I watched Tenet. Yes. Um, Tenet, I had to wait for it at home. Tenet was a very, I mean, I guess a controversial. Christopher Nolan's like, I'm sticking and we're keeping this yeah, to we're, theaters. I'm the, I'm the movie that's going to reopen theaters and we're going to have a, a, a hard window before it goes like, out. You're going to theaters. You're going to watch this movie. You're not going to understand any of it <laughs> with yes. the sound mixing, but whatever. So I watched Tenet. And the first time I watched it, halfway through the movie, uh, the power goes out. And I was really sad. Wow, that sounds like a tragedy. And then I had to come I basically had to come back and watch it again. Um, but I love the film and it was a very weird experience to to be there like with sparsely any people. There wasn't really anyone in there, mm-hmm. but it I it was a nice experience because I'm not really used to that. I'm not really used to an empty theater like that. Yeah. Um but like I said, with the bring them bringing them back the classics for the pen like throughout the pandemic, I thought that was uh really cool of them and it really gave it gave me an opportunity to see um older movies that i never got to see when i was young which if you get that chance ever to watch the original star wars movie especially empire yes yeah, i man. highly I recommend i didn't know they were doing that i wish i could do yeah. that yeah i think they're still doing classics and stuff too now though i think they have five dollar favorites i mean they have so many like different opportunities like you can rent out a whole theater now mm-hmm. which which we did actually do that we did that for my niece's birthday yeah. Raya, right? Ryan, the Last Dragon. How was, then, how was that experience? Which then made me get the premiere access because forget it, she was, wanted to watch it again. So yeah, okay. um, that was amazing. It was amazing to have an entire theater for like a relatively per head ticket price. It was awesome. It's yeah. awesome. It was two hundred dollars, right? Yeah, it's like two hundred bucks, but you can get twenty, 20 people, people, so it's about ten dollars each per ticket, and they still have those options and those prices. Those were like dream things growing up. It was like one day I'll have an entire theater for myself and. That's like at your at your fingertips now. Yeah. So I think we've had that discussion before mm-hmm. um, with our difference of opinions in this model and what it was bringing. Um, what are your thoughts in this climate? I mean, me personally, I mean, I think I was with Link. The theater model is important, but I really enjoy watching at home. Um, I'm getting older now mm-hmm. and convenience is a big part of it. And the fact that I have to drive 20 to 30 minutes, I have to park, I have to sit through 30 minutes of trailers. Um, See Nicole Kidman watch, watch a movie. <laughs> yeah, Nicole Kidman watch. has to introduce every single movie at AMC. La La Land, Jurassic Park. She has to see all these movies. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Um, and then drive back home. It's just a lot of work. At home, I was able to watch more stuff because I could yeah. just go in one. or And I could start a movie late. And then if I got tired, I could turn it off and I'll yeah, finish it back. tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah. Watch it again right away because, like you said, rewatches are super important. So you took me to go watch Black Widow because things were better around that time. And you were really adamant about, wow, we've waited all this time for a Marvel movie. We have to see it in yeah. theater. So you even... like You dragged me kicking and screaming and you paid, helped pay for my ticket. But... It was a great experience, but immediately I wanted to watch it right away, you know? Yeah. And and you can do that so easily at home. Subtitles is a big part, too. That's, yes, that's what I love about it. Go ahead. Especially with Tenet. Yeah. Had I watched it in theaters, I'd be like, what the heck did I just watch? Because I cannot understand anything. It's a trick to make you go multiple times. I'm, yeah. I'm <laughs> which, which worked, by the way. <laughs> but A-list. Thank you, AMC. I do think, though, it, it does make the watching the movie fun, trying to figure out what they're saying. Because yeah. it's already a confusing movie. Mm-hmm. But not trying, but trying to understand, trying to, to decipher what they're saying. Yeah, that's a fun game. But I noticed that some of the theaters, especially AMC, again, again, it's the one we're most experienced with, are bringing like caption, close cap, yeah, yeah, I've close caption options, which is great. And I've always wondered. I know they've always had support, like you could get like a little device to go. So people who Whoa, you know are hard of hearing have that kind of support. Can, I do that? can we do that? Yeah, you can do that. But now they actually have screenings that have it on the screen, so everybody can enjoy without the you know the support the devices. Yeah, which is which is really really cool of them, and I think obviously, I mean it's a ch- it's times are changing. Yeah, and I think that um, this change is is proving to be a good thing. There's so many different. Um, I think Link mentioned it before, so many different types of films being yeah. um, brought to theaters, like uh, foreign films as well. Um, and one of those I think we watched together was the Demon Slayer movie. Mm, yeah. And I thought that was incredible. Um, oh, I mean, that, that movie's great on its own. You, you, but you took me for my birthday, yes. Yeah. yeah. And so, but they had that film like 
They, I didn't I didn't see that before where they have uh which is I mean was, was new to fa- me. Was it a fathom event? No, no, it was they, it was like okay. they were just selling they were just putting it out in the, uh, in theaters. Yeah. But they had it they had the English dub and they had it sub. Yes. And I thought that was really cool that they had um the option mm-hmm. to do both. Like it's not just a dub for the people that are fans of the sub. They they you can watch it either way. I know here in Miami we have a huge bilingual uh, population, mm-hmm. and they have subtitles in Spanish. They have Spanish language at certain at certain times. So options there for yeah. those that want to see those alternatives. That's what was beautiful too. I think about the the digital releases, especially like the Disney ones, the Premier Access ones that I got a lot of. You had special features right away. You yeah. had you know you had the captions. You had different languages if, if you needed to. You mentioned that you went back for Tenet, watched a couple of other stuff. Okay, we, me and Link, went back into the theater a little later. Link, what what was it that drove you back into the theater finally? I, I'm not sure what came out first, the Demon Slayer movie or Snake Eyes. Demon Slayer, I think. Yeah, you took me for my birthday, and then when I realized, okay, you know what, it's not that bad. There's barely anyone there. Um. We went for Snake Eyes. I think for Snake Eyes, that's when I, I got a list again for mm. Snake Eyes because during the pandemic, you know, they paused it. You were allowed to pause it. I yeah. paused it, and then, and then you're like, "It's Snake Eyes. I don't want to pay." For it. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I don't want to pay for it. That was a good call. You should not pay for so, Snake Eyes. So, so yeah, I got Snake Eyes was the one that brought me back. Okay, and I think, um, kind of going back to. To what you were saying with the with the at home watching at home, mm-hmm. I think we were having this discussion. I think um, what started off was Wonder Woman eighty four. Yes, and when that movie came out, it was a letdown. In my head, I was like, "I we're gonna watch this in theaters," and they're like, "No, we're not. We're gonna watch it at home." And I was like, "Okay, I'm not gonna fight you on that." <laughs> and we watched it home, and I think that's the first like main film that was like that that big blockbuster film that was coming out in theaters yeah. that was at home mm-hmm. and that's the first time I With, without an additional purchase yeah, exactly just, right and it was straight straight to the and that was a bold move warner brothers did that with hbo, HBO max yeah. they had a new streaming platform that had just come out and they went all in with and just movies, said they yeah. were going to put the entire slate exactly on it. and I, I love that yeah yeah i did too i know it's not good for the a lot of <laughs> actors and actresses and directors complain about yeah. it and, and I understand that not being good for them, but also if we can reconfigure that compensation scale to something fair, yeah. we can move towards that model. It was kind of a surprise out of left field for them. Yeah, I, like I said, like I think that was a very strange experience for me. Um, I guess where I'm at in my life is the theaters are so important. The theaters are so like big for me. Yeah, that I don't think anything can replicate that experience. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm I'm always a proponent of if I can watch it in the theaters, I mean with a list of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think that's a big draw for me. It's like if I'm paying for a list and I want to check something out, I can go check it out. And that experience for me is is just different. Like being in there, it doesn't even have to be with as as I've seen it. It doesn't have to be with other people. I do enjoy the social aspect. I don't talk to anyone and I don't know any of them. Mm-hmm. But it's obviously you have to be careful and safe in this in this um, environment. But Nothing for like nothing's gonna replace watching a movie in theaters for me, but what I have seen is with Wonder Woman eighty four especially, I thought that that movie. I mean, I wasn't a huge fan of it, yeah. and after watching it, like when when I was watching it during that experience, it was kind of like people could go to the bathroom. You, I think I was more inclined to make jokes or to talk through it. Mm-hmm. I wasn't as focused in the story. And it just so happened that the movie for me was weak and, and it wasn't that it wasn't that great. Um, but I did notice that it was like, I don't want to like use a weird word, but it, it just felt ir- kind of irreverent mm-hmm. to the film. Yeah. And I wasn't as focused. So maybe if it was a better film, I would have felt differently. But I think that opened my eyes to, hey, you don't have to watch everything in theaters. Yeah. Um, it's possible. It's like you can take a risk. Sure. But you, it could be a safer bet to just watch it at home. Yeah. I, I agree with you. It's a catch-22 because we've talked about how your experience can shape your perspective. And sometimes if we do or don't enjoy a film, is based on how and who we watched it with and at what time. I thought I enjoyed Wonder Woman 84 more at home. Yeah. That, yeah. 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 You enjoyed it in the movie. Because it was low risk. It was like, yeah, that was fine. Then I, like... You know, then you I start think talking. about it. It's like, oh, wait. Oh, you know what? I didn't. I'm not gonna watch it. I'm again. glad I didn't go to the theaters to watch. Yeah, it. exactly. And so HBO released a bunch of movies. And what I learned, I think, in 20 
21 was that yeah I'm, i don't like a whole ton of uh, warner brothers films apparently <laughs> because um a mixed bag is definitely what we got and i every month i was like this was gonna come on in theaters they were gonna make me drive to the movie theater <laughs> and like you know conceivably pay for a ticket and then sit there like this is a movie they spent millions of dollars on and you know i won't at what specific films there mortal Kombat, but um Many of them, it was hit and miss. It was like, oh, this was fine. I'm glad I watched it at home. Oh, this was... Re- I mean, was there a was there a standout HBO Max title? Dune? Dune, yeah. I mean, oh, we yeah. waited all year for it, though. Oh, like at the beginning of the year? Yeah. Like, Listen, with... I feel like I'm a slave. Uh, I can be a slave to the moment, a slave to the hype. Yeah. So when, Mortal Com- when the Mortal Kombat trailer dropped, I was like, man... <laughs> this uh, this is kind of hype. I was like, but then I, be careful, then, guys. But then you, but then you were talking to me, and you're like, "This movie's gonna suck." And I'm like, "Is he right?" <laughs> <laughs> and then you were just like, "I'm just, we're just gonna watch at home." I and then when the reviews came out, people said it sucked. I didn't watch the movie for like a month after, like yeah. or three weeks, right before it was about to come off of of HBO. And I was like, "Yeah, this movie sucks." I'm glad I didn't watch it in theaters. I'm sorry to those who like that movie. Yeah, I'm sure. You, and for those that worked really hard at making the movie, I'm sure you had a really good time. I'm sure you had your hands tied. Uh, you would have liked it to be better. <laughs> but, but I think, but I think that just emphasizes the point that I really don't have to watch every movie in the theater because you're right. A lot of those movies were gonna come out in theater. Yeah. And if I went to go watch them in theaters, I would have been like, man, I maybe I just wasted some gas. Yeah. Like. Tom and Jerry was fun watching at home with the kids. I enjoyed watching that one yeah. for sure. Um, Space Jam, I thought it was fine. I know a lot of people don't like Space Jam. I thought it was fine. I haven't watched it. <laughs> you know, and that happened eventually during the pandemic. I just, I did it. I, I thought I was going to watch everything and I just started missing stuff and it was like, oh, it's there. I'll get to it when I get to it. Yeah, I also think that it took away that brevity want to watch movies yeah mm-hmm. with that with that uh with the pandemic and and with everything going on it's it's kind of made us like we can have it whenever we want yeah we can have it well Absolutely. if we want something we want it now yeah and with the theatrical window it's like you have to you should watch this now especially if they're big name movies and you want them in a premium format because you're not going to get that experience exactly and i think that's kind of like how i look at it now yeah. um with with big films coming out and if I have the time, and if I think something's gonna be good, I'll go watch a an indie film or something like that, either with friends or by myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am grateful for the abundance of choice um, to be able to say, "Hey, I'm going to want to go watch this in theaters," or I don't feel like going. I can watch this at home. Yeah, I think that consumer choice yeah. is super important. That's what. Yeah, this is why I love this model so much because. We get to decide. You know, mm-hmm. it's not another. It's not a movie theater trying to decide for me. I get to decide. Yeah, I also think it puts pressure on them to deliver a quality product. I'll give you an example. You think so? I I think so. I think they could rest on their laurels. After seeing what, after seeing what Netflix uh, does. Yeah, but I think, for example, F F nine, the Fast Saga. I was convinced to go watch this in July. I didn't re up <laughs> my A list. Forgot that we watched that. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Th- I. I paid for a movie ticket, a full Dolby Experience ticket for this movie. And and I waited because I wasn't sure at first, you know, but I heard it was so ridiculous that it had to be seen. So it was a couple of weeks late on it. So I watched it in July and it was terrible. It was, for those of you that don't know, the Fast and the Furious series is a guilty pleasure for me. So I should enjoy this movie because, like, I think they're hilariously bad. Um, This one was atrociously bad. And it drove me out of the theater. I was like, I'm not going to go back to the theater. That's it. I'm, I, And I stayed away all the way till September. The other part was that I paid for this movie. And then just like two weeks later, it was on streaming. And I was like, you see? You see? And we got these shorter and shorter windows now. Basically, all the major studios are doing like 45-minute windows. Yeah. 45 days. 40, I, and You know, and I said this and like multiple times it, yeah. when we were, <laughs> when no, we were it's, talking it's about okay. this. okay. Like yeah, it. so 45 day windows Paramount Plus, Universal with Peacock. Um I forget what other streaming services are cuz there's, there's like, like 50 of them. like yeah. you can't really keep track. So basically every major studio is just going to kind of skip their 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 home video release 
They're not because it's like 30 days you'll have home video and then 45 they'll be on streaming. Yeah. Um, and, you know, those numbers will change depending on the title. But I also stopped buying movies because I used to buy a lot of movies. And now it's kind of like it, it's going to end up somewhere because every movie is a piece of content that someone's going to grab up. Either one of the major studios produced it or Netflix, Amazon Prime are going to bid on it. It's it's going to yeah, be. Google's yeah, because, I mean, they're they're basically adding to their vault. They're adding yeah. to their collection. And I think that, I mean, they pay these large amounts of money for a film that's like, that's basically what's going to make the money. It's not like they're going to have like ticket sales or anything. Right. It's you're buying a, a title that's bringing. It's like another one. It's like another uh, another one for the books. Like mm-hmm. you're buying a title that brings more people. It's like, oh, they have this movie. Oh, they have this movie. We should just subscribe to this service. And I think that it's changing the game. I think it's yeah. changing the, the business model. And it's very, very interesting to see these different streaming services and the the ways that they're going about. Um, navigating yeah. these waters. So I think what you were like hinting at, Link, is flooding the market with all these titles and just kind of producing garbage or uninteresting titles. But I think that they have to really think about the movies they're going to spend millions of dollars to put in theaters. Because you have to convince someone to go watch them because in literally weeks, they'll be at home. And in literally other weeks, they'll be on a streaming service that you already own. So you really have to convince the consumer to go watch it right now because in the back of the minds you're always going to be like i already have hbo or peacock or disney plus and i'll get it eventually oh disney's the other one 45 day window for their movies so what have we watched since then i i did end up going back in september because you know i got to have my marble movies <laughs> so i saw shang chi we all saw shang chi beautiful yeah yeah it was great i went back for that's when i reactivated my a-list because i knew okay the next couple of months are going to be big so I finally got to see Bond and Dune and Eternals, which we won't speak about here. Ghostbusters, Encanto. But a lot of like blockbuster movies, right? Yeah. Is that what you guys are mostly been watching? Yeah, pretty, so... Yeah, go ahead, Gabriel. For me, I think we saw pretty much similar movies. I guess some of the titles um, was Jason Statham and Wrath of Man, which is one of those movies that it's like... I kind of like watching my grandpa. That's one of those movies. He like those generic action movies. Right. And I watched, I watched it with my other uncle and I mean, we had an all right time. Like he didn't pay for it. So mm-hmm. he, we went on discount Tuesday. So, I mean, I had that covered with a list. Um, we like snake eyes, black widow. I saw the green Knight, um, which, uh, sunset actually had, uh, on a very, it was pretty limited release. Mm. Um, but I went opening, opening weekend, or opening day. Um, I think you did go opening day actually, which was a, I mean, because I had a system, I'd go play soccer and then go home shower and then go watch the movie. Yeah, and then you had the next day off. Those, yeah, and those are my those are my Thursdays basically. Those have been my Thursdays, Mm -hmm. and and I watched that, and it was a pretty like, it's not a blockbuster movie, it's not a huge movie, so it was in a smaller theater, and it was an intimate setting, and it was it was a nice change of pace because I'm always in the Dolby theater, always I'm always in a big, um. Like premium format. Yeah. You know, that's premium funny. Format, I haven't been in a non-luxury seat in like years. What? Yeah, I haven't seen her move in a regular chair. I did. I went to... Like, oh, regular chair. Yeah, because when we go to Tamiami, they have those yeah, luxury yeah, right, right. recliners too. Those are great. I went to... Uh, I went to a Regal in Orlando. Oh. I'm oh, not, no. really, I'm not ah. really proud of it. And I don't know... I don't know if the like... It's gimmick or what it was going for was like retro like like theater from the 80s or something. That's just what theaters are like. We're spoiled. But I went in there and it was, I don't know, kind of smelled like a hospital. The seats were like creaky. Well, and You know, that's why AMC basically almost went bankrupt. I mean, did. I mean, they got banked out by investors twice over the pandemic. But the reason they went bankrupt so quickly over the other theater chains is because they've spent so much money on infrastructure, on on theater, like renovations, on on new chairs, on bigger screens, on digital, yeah, and all that. How have the movies been doing? The box office performance. Wait, I didn't see what movies I saw. Oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize. I forgive you. I forgive you both. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what did I do? I don't know. You didn't do anything. I'm sorry. I take my. I forgive you. I don't know if I'm still forgiving you about Avengers and Colson. Ah. 
So, like, I pretty much watched all the movies you guys watched. <laughs> yeah. Really? That's what you wanted to. That's <laughs> no. what you wanted to. I didn't get to check. Listen, listen. I didn't same. get to say my to movies, say my, okay? My mine's ridiculous. You get me? I, I They're was, the exact same movies you saw. Because, like I said, I watched movies with you guys, and I've been going a lot with Gabriel. Mm-hmm. I did. I have seen some movies that I, I didn't watch with you guys. Uh, I went to the Fathom event and watched Howl's Moving Castle. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. I think that was probably the best movie I saw in movie theaters. With, I mean, I don't know. That or Dune. Mm-hmm. And then I watched The French Dispatch. Oh, man. I haven't had a chance yeah, to Yeah, I went by that. myself because I think Gabriel was gone that weekend. You were that out that weekend. I was just by myself. Mm-hmm. And then let me go watch this movie. And I was the only guy in the movie theater. <laughs> it was just me and a bunch of uh, Wes Anderson Elderly fans. Elderly women? No, no, no. Oh, like okay. young women. And that's when I realized, hmm, maybe I do have a type. And it's the Wes Anderson fans. <laughs> 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 so I was really happy. So anytime there's another Wes Anderson movie, I'm coming down. You're there. Yeah, I'm going to be there. Opening, yeah, opening day night. Open, opening day night. One. Exactly. Whatever variant is out there, you're going to be there. <laughs> and then Gabriel and I watched House of Gucci. Oh. Very nice. Which <laughs> I feel like I sarcastically love because of all the <laughs> terrible accents. And I honestly feel that if Adam Driver used his Italian accent as Kylo Ren, the sequels would be fixed. Cause that's a, that's a bold <laughs> wow. Repeat that. If Adam Driver used his Italian accent as Kylo Ren, the sequels would be fixed. Yeah, that's all it would take. That's Just, all it would take to fix. Maybe the, the last one. Maybe Rice. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, Rice. Because I like the other two. It was just interesting watching that one because. They're like heavy hit. Like there's some heavy hitters in that movie. The Jeremy, cast for House of Jeremy Irons, Adam Driver, Jared Leto, Al Pacino. Al Pacino. Lady Gaga's been doing pretty well as well. But, they reanimated Al Pacino. <laughs> that's kind of what it looks like. Um, we were counting how how many times they said they they would say the the word Gucci. We lost kind of like eight minutes yeah, in. There was like, <laughs> but no, I think you were counting. There was like at least like fifteen. Yeah. But it was it was very interesting to hear all those accents and how they. It's so ridiculous. They, I loved it. One of the one of the movies that I actually really enjoyed was No Time to Die. Oh yeah, and yes, that, that one. Um, I mean, we could do a whole review on it, but I think that, like, pertaining to this topic is that that movie got postponed, like, how many times? Oh, 57. And it feels that like. was one of, if not my most anticipated film mm-hmm. of the year. It was between that and Dune. And it was, we were right there. We were, like, a month before when everything yeah. closed down around March ish. Yes, and the, they pushed it back. The, the movie was slated to come out in April. And I was like, man, it's going to be great birthday month gonna watch uh no time to die and i because i love these bond films yeah. i love daniel craig and everything he's done with the character um and he got moved and i remember i was like man i understand but man we were right there and i think this is like one of the first times where it's like this movie got like a movie that's so close to coming out that i'm ready to like it's done mm-hmm. and they're doing like the music came out the billy Eilish song came out every like i was getting ready for it and then they're just like I'm hey, we're going to push it back guy. to November. That's not the same. That's boom, a beautiful boom, rendition. Boom, 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 um, boom, boom, boom. And I was, it was just, I was angry. I was like, man, I had so much hype for it. I was so much anticipation, and they just pushed it back. And then, Did, you it, know, live up, did it live up to the hype? Because I haven't seen it. What? I remember I didn't watch the, se- the, pre- oh, we'll the previous We'll go. Oh, that's right. A-list, bro. A-list, we'll go. It's still out. It's still no, it's, not, it's at home now, though. You can oh, no, the whole series. watch it at home. Yeah. And then I'll just go by myself and watch it again. I waited so long for this movie that I just lost, not interest, I obviously was waiting for it, but at some point, this period became so long that it was like, I'll watch it when I watch it, and whenever it really exists, and I can see it, but I think that made me enjoy it more, because when I showed up, it was like, oh, this is this is an old friend, you know? You know what it was? It was, I just felt hurt. Like, I just felt hurt that we were gonna get this film and it got pushed and then pushed again and i like after that second one i was like i'm over it like my hypes died like i was just i was just upset Mm -hmm. and then when it finally came out like maybe like the day or two before i was like i was watching the the original films um and watching in theaters was like man this is this is fantastic and it was i think one of the first ones was like aside from black widow that had gotten pushed yeah, and my anticipation maybe wasn't as high, but I think the film was great, 
and I'm happy that that eventually I did get to watch it. Yeah. I think movies like Shang-Chi, Ghostbusters Afterlife, and uh, 007, Dune, uh, yeah. No Time for That, Dune, Dune, they really, like, sold me on, like, why this experience is so different. Yeah. The movie that deserves to be seen in the theater, especially in those larger formats. Even though sometimes you couldn't understand what they were saying in Dune. Which is why I loved that the dual release. I loved being able to then just go home yes, and rewatch I it. Yes, I love that option yeah. so much. Thank you, HBO Max. I know, Which, you got, I know you got some heat for that, but for me, you don't get heat. You get love. Yeah. At the end of the day, I still went out and watched it in theater. Yeah. You know? and, we watched, and we watched it the next day in at home. Yeah. It was, so. I thought it was beautiful. And I mean, that's something you can share with people that, yeah. that maybe couldn't attend with you at the theater Mm -hmm. or don't have a list or whatever reason and you can just share that with them yeah and i think that part of the model that really resonates with me and i love it so they're struggling to make the money that we or that these films made before the pandemic so we're slowly getting back into that and with that what we talked about these dual releases they've kind of shifted how their content is we know that hbo is gonna release a new movie supposedly we don't know what Many of them are going to be, but they're going to try to do a theatrical-like release once a month for HBO Max to keep those subscriptions going. We know Disney is producing uh, movies and TV that are cinematic levels. Um, What do you think is the future of this model? Where are we going? Where do you see this continuing to evolve and how? I personally think that... I think it's going to eventually... Yes, we're doing both, both movies and, and theaters. I think reopening movie theaters is uh, pushing, you know, pushing back the demise of movie theaters. I think eventually we're just going to go full streaming. So you think it's inevitable? Inevitable, yeah, exactly. Is there anything you think that movie theaters can incorporate into their experience that will either elongate, delay that, or... or- or put off the end of movie theaters? No. No? I Personally, I don't know. What about you, Gabriel? What do you think theaters can provide that maybe the home experience can't? The food? Come, the, the sound quality? But even cheaper, then... Cheaper concessions, bro. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, but, that's, but, that's or, better, it, or better concessions, you know? Because more premium. Like, if you have premium formats for movies, maybe premium formats for food. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. Aeropuerto Tropical. Well, it's like... Because we used to go to this theater called the Cine Bistro, right? And... They have like luxury um, food with a luxury screening. We haven't gone in a while because you know those prices are pretty exorbitant. And when the movie, when I don't have to pay for the movie, then I can pay for premium. But maybe in something like that, you know, I know that there's like bars in AMC's now. Yeah, you called McGuffins, right? Yeah, that's actually <laughs> true. Yeah, I guess a pressure brought that. Sponsor no us, relation. AMC. Sponsor us. But I think that um... we're already shilling for you. For real. <laughs> I think that with what's happening now, um, a part of me agrees with Link that I think this change is inevitable, but I don't think it'll be anytime soon. I think in the heat of the pandemic and kind of towards, I mean, it's not over, but I think when movie theaters started opening up, I think it was looking very, very bleak, Grim. Which, which was having, which is what made us have these conversations. Mm-hmm of maybe movie theaters are going to be a thing of the past. Um, but with these, with these big movies, I think, I, think the, I think there is going to be a shift. Maybe indie films and maybe small budget films that usually were getting screen time, maybe they won't have as many opportunities to be shown. Maybe the, the larger blockbusters or the big budget movies are going to be taking more screens because... The theaters are realizing, hey, this is what's going to make us the most money and how we survive. Yeah. Um, I don't want it to go, but the way that it's happening, I think like Netflix and I think Paramount Plus are going to be releasing like new content like every week, a movie like a week next yeah. year. I think a they were saying a week that is what they were saying, and yeah. that's in, that's like what? That's insane. Yeah. And I think that there's just going to be so like such an influx of content, such an influx of film, and that's going to be a, there's going to be a demand also for creators to provide that content. Exactly, and I, it's just it's a tough spot for studios, for directors and and actors doing the work, what they want to do with. I mean, TV being as big as it is, like maybe traditional actors that are usually just do film, they're mm-hmm. going to have to be rethinking all those things. 
Um, yeah, but, but they've already been doing that though. But as a yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like mm. it's it's gonna, but it's not. It's not, I'm not saying it's gonna be like easy yeah, for them. Right. I think it's a tough position. But I mean, as a consumer, we're thriving right now. Like yeah. it, it might be an opportunity too, because you you talk about an independent movie getting pushed out even more so than they already were from theaters because like we have to go to specific theaters that actually yeah. carry yeah. them as it is. But that might be another opportunity because. There might be more eyeballs on those films if they go direct to streaming. If they go, if everybody already has Netflix and Amazon Prime, maybe more people will watch that than will pay a ticket out of their pocket to go watch it. Especially those movies that don't really benefit much from a premium experience. Yeah. So it might be an opportunity for those kind of creators to to find a platform that will be more beneficial. Um, I thought about. I walked into an arcade the other day, mm-hmm. one of those like David Buster's and um, game time, you know, those large like complex yeah. arcades. And I saw a bunch of new games, like like a Mario Kart that's like exclusive to the arcade. Luigi's and, Mansion. Yeah, Luigi's Mansion. I saw that one. I was like, how do you play a Luigi's Mansion arcade? It must be completely different. It's not fun. Oh, it's not really? Yeah. Well, anyways, I, I thought, look, here are a bunch of games that don't exist at home and they're still here in our in it thriving in an arcade setting that is kind of like a thing of the past. Maybe movies are going to become a luxury, you know? Like drive-in movie theaters. Yeah, exactly. Because they still exist, right? And people go to them. They're just not like a main source of income for the most part. Yeah, I think... I mean, you never know. You really don't. Mm-hmm. You can you can see trends, but people's tastes are, are fickle. You, you never know what, what people are going to gravitate towards. Or, or what they're going to spend their money on. Um, and especially with all these different um, mediums um, being presented, it's it's really fascinating to see. And I mean, I really, I can't really predict that. I can say maybe what might happen, but mm-hmm. it also makes it kind of fun. Like, times are changing. It's not always going to be the same. And, and I mean, I think we need that as a society, as growth. Yeah. I think we live in a world where we have so much at our fingertips tips information is shared back and forth it all started with just prose narrations we used to go to the live theater and see actors perform that and that became less popular as we invented film and then we created the theaters now we can see these stories at home but these mediums they continue to exist you know among certain circles we don't stop telling stories a certain way we just diversify and we still teach in schools, but you can learn anything from behind your computer screen. And I think that it's amazing that as technology advances, the storytelling methods, they adapt, but at their core, they remain the same type of stories we've been telling our whole lives. We, we seek to communicate ideas to one another and share our stories with the people around us. And we can sit here and we can... Uh, provide conjecture as to what direction. But the great thing about the future is that we never really know where it's going. So all we can do is continue to explore this world and try to find that place where we belong. Sometimes it's in a theater hall. Sometimes it's sitting at home. But always it's surrounded by the people that we love and by new people that we're one moment away from meeting and discovering. And as we continue to share our stories and explore the stories of others, we seek what that driving force. Until next time, keep on searching.